a superhero is hard work. You have to run all over town, defeating villains, saving people from peril, and presumably, you still need to find time for work and a personal life. That's why having an assistant or a sidekick can be so valuable. Of course, not all sidekicks are as useful as they should be. Welcome to Top 10 Nerd. I'm Andrew Boyd, and today we will be exploring the top 10 sidekicks who hold superheroes back. Let's dive in. Number 10. Robin. Perhaps the most iconic sidekick in history is Robin the Boy Wonder, who is the young ward of Batman. Robin first appeared in 1940's Detective Comics number 38, less than a year after Batman was introduced. Taking inspiration from both Robin Hood and The Bird, Batman and Robin are as iconic and dynamic a duo as milk and cookies. The first and most well-known Robin is Dick Grayson, a former trapeze artist who was adopted by Batman after his parents were killed. Robin had a tendency in his earlier appearances to be constantly captured and needing to be rescued by Batman, an aspect of the character that was also present in his appearances in the 1960s Batman TV show, where he was played by Burt Ward. However, Dick Grayson and most of the other characters who have become Robin have since been written to be a valuable member of the team, rescuing Batman just as often as he rescues them. With the introduction of the third Robin, Tim Drake, it was also revealed that part of the reason that Robin is so important is that he brings a bit of light to Batman's dark crusade, preventing him from being too dark and depressing. So I guess Robin does hold Batman back, but in a good way. Number 9. Rick Jones When Bruce Banner was testing his gamma bomb, a young teenager named Rick Jones drove out onto the test site on a dare, unaware that he was about to get hit in the blast. Banner rescued him but was hit by the gamma bomb and transformed into the Incredible Hulk. So right off the bat, Rick held back Banner from ever having a normal life. He became the Hulk's sidekick for many years, aiding the Green Goliath and more importantly, doing his best to hold back the Hulk from destroying everything in his path. He is also in frequent need of rescue, but did eventually become the gamma-powered hero known as Ab- Rick has also served as a sidekick to other Marvel heroes over the years, including Captain America and Captain Marvel. Number 8. Uncle Marvel Of all of the sidekicks of the original Captain Marvel, or Shazam if you prefer, Uncle Dudley is by far the most useless. While the other members of the Marvel family, like Mary Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr., get their powers from Billy Batson's hero persona and from the wizard Shazam, Dudley is actually a fraud with no powers to speak of. He isn't even actually their real uncle. He's just some old dude who decided to con his way into the family. While other members of the family will say their magic word and instantly be transformed into their hero selves, costume and all, Dudley will wait until no one is looking and then frantically tear off his clothes to reveal a homemade super suit that he wears underneath. Everyone is aware of his lack of powers, but goes along with the charade because they think it's funny. Whenever he was asked to use his powers, he would complain that his Shazam Bago was acting up and that he couldn't do it right now, but totally could some other time. So he has no powers and is really more of a liability than a help to the team as he runs into danger with them and they constantly have to keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't get horribly murdered while they also deal with the supervillain. In fairness to Uncle Marvel, in the villain Black Adam's first appearance in Marvel Family Number 1, it was Uncle Marvel who defeated him when the team was at a stalemate with the villain by suggesting that he be allowed to join the team as he also had gotten his powers from the Wizard Masham. I mean, Hashaz. No, I mean... Shamhaz. This caused Black Adam to interrupt Dudley and fall into his trap by correcting him, saying, You sputtering old fool. You mean Shazam! Causing him to be depowered and defeated by the Marvels. Number 7. Herbie. This character is proof that Marvel having to deal with weird rights issues is by no means a recent thing. In 1978, Marvel was trying to get an animated series based off of the Fantastic Four produced. However, they had already issued the rights to make a movie based off of the Human Torch to another company and therefore could not use Johnny Storm in their series. Needing a new fourth member of the team, Stan Lee pitched the idea of a cute robot sidekick to round out the team, and he had Jack Kirby design Herbie in what would be Kirby's last contribution to Marvel Comics. Herbie was eventually brought into the comics where he was created by Mr. Fantastic as a robot to help him search for Galactus. Unfortunately, a villain named Dr. Sun was able to transfer his intelligence into Herbie and could control the robot whenever he wanted in efforts to sabotage the Fantastic Four, making Herbie a sleeper agent who was actually doing more harm to the team than good. Herbie eventually sacrificed himself to defeat Dr. Sun, but various Herbie robots have been built in the 
years since for the purposes of general work and of acting as a nanny for Franklin Richards. After the Fantastic Four removed his inhibitor chip, Herbie lashed out, left, and joined the AI Army, a violent group working for the cause of robot liberation. Number six. Moon Boy. So Devil Dinosaur is from the dinosaur world of Earth 78,411, who was captured by a tribe of creatures who killed his mother and siblings and then tried to burn him in an attempt to appease an erupting volcano. The volcano caught the young T-Rex in its fire and turned him red, and he became known as Devil Dinosaur. He was aided by an early hairy humanoid called Moon Boy, and the two became partners. Moon Boy doesn't really do much or bring much to the table, and spends a lot of time providing moral support from the sidelines. He is occasionally captured, but overall he doesn't get much to do. I mean, how much help can a monkey man really give to a T-Rex? Number 5. Jimmy Olsen Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen is quite often more trouble than he's worth, with him often being kidnapped by aliens, sent back in time, or forced to marry a gorilla. He has such a tendency to get himself in trouble, Superman had to give him a signal watch that would let him know whenever Jimmy was in trouble. When you consider how many people need help help from Superman at any given moment, it makes you wonder how many people have died needlessly in fires because Jimmy has been turned into a human porcupine and needs help. To be fair, Jimmy has saved Superman's life a few times over the years and has been given superpowers at various times over the years which he has used to be an effective hero, but he does slow Superman down with his constant need to be rescued. Number 4. Doiby Dickles Charles Doiby Dickles is an old school cab driver from Brooklyn who was the sidekick of the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. His nickname is actually Derby after the hat he's always wearing, but his heavy accent makes him pronounce it Doiby. He was a skilled street fighter and a good driver with a love for his card, Goitrude. When acting as Alan Scott's sidekick, he would often wear a similar costume and be called Devastatin' Doiby. Now, having a chauffeur character to help you get around isn't that weird. Hell, it worked for Green Hornet. But Green Lantern can fly. So when he hangs out with Doiby, it's actually slowing him down. And it's not like Doiby is useful enough to justify the delay. He has no powers, he's just a normal dude who attacks people with a Wrench. He left the planet for several years after an alien princess named Princess Ramia married him and the pair ruled the planet Merg, or as he calls it, Moig. Number 3. Windy and Marvin When Hanna-Barbera adapted the heroes of the DC Universe for the small screen in the animated Super Friends show, which featured Batman, Robin, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and Superman teaming up to fight crime, in an effort to give kids some characters to relate to and presumably forgetting that Robin was already a teenager age superhero, the team was also saddled with two teenagers named Wendy and Marvin, and their dog, Wonder Dog. Wendy wasn't much help, and Marvin was a straight up idiot, but there they were, with no explanation, hanging out with the superheroes. As writers Timothy and Kevin Burke stated in their book, Saturday Morning Fever, Wendy and Marvin were the ultimate degenerate form of the kid's sidekick, about as useful to the super friends as a burst appendix. They existed primarily to be rescued and to help illustrate the moral message of the week. Wonder Dog was a Fred Silverman inspired dog sidekick, part of the shameful lineage which would eventually result in a later incarnation of Spider-Man being burdened with a little white Yap Yap dog. Silverman and other Kidvid producers had an E-Day fix that the presence of a dog inevitably made a cartoon attractive to kids. The pair were so useless that they were replaced by the Wonder Twins in the next incarnation of the Super Friends. Number 2. Alpha Spider-Man was one of the first superheroes to prove that teenagers didn't have to just be sidekicks and could in fact be their own heroes. Which is why it's kind of weird for him to get a teenage sidekick. Andy McGuire was a normal student at Midtown High, Peter Parker's old school. He was a painfully average student who was mostly ignored by his teachers, parents, and fellow students. One day, Peter Parker was presenting a demonstration at Horizon Labs and an accident caused Andy to develop superpowers such as energy manipulation, force field projections, telekinesis flight, and matter manipulation among others. So, what's the problem? That sounds like a character who could somewhat keep up with Spidey. Well, he was such a bad sidekick that when Spider-Man brought him to try and help the Avengers battle Terminus, Alpha was so irresponsible with his powers that several aircraft began malfunctioning and plummeting to the ground. The Avengers and Spider-Man had to rescue all of the passengers, just barely being able to avoid a colossal body count. Spider-Man decided Alpha was too irresponsible to have
have superpowers and created a machine that took away Alpha's powers. Number 1. Snapper Carr You may know that the Justice League was first introduced as an updated version of the Justice Society in 1960's Brave and the Bold number 28. You may know that the League consisted of seven members, Aquaman, Batman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Martian Manhunter. But do you remember the eighth member of the Justice League who was introduced in their first appearance? While developing the Justice League, DC executive editor Whitney Ellsworth insisted that the team have a hip talking young teenage character who the young readers could relate to. Thus, Snapper Carr was created. He didn't have any powers and was a civilian who would constantly snap his fingers as he explained it to the Flash in his first appearance. You hear these fingers snap and flash? That's my way of showing I like something. That's why the cats around here call me Snapper. Flash decides to bring this young weirdo into battle because he may be the key to the League's success or failure against Starro the Conqueror. After Starro was defeated, he was made an honorary member of the League and was present for several of the stories in the team's first decade. As mentioned before, he does nothing except snap his fingers and was more team mascot than anything else. But as the sidekick of the entire League, he held them back in a massive way when he was tricked by the Joker into revealing the location of the League headquarters, forcing the League to spend valuable time relocating to a space satellite. Snapper was not allowed to come along. Snapper was briefly given teleportation powers in an effort to make him useful, but is a mostly forgotten character now. Any other sidekicks who cause their superheroes more trouble than they're worth? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to like and subscribe for more Top 10 Nerd.